So as I explained yesterday, I'm doing these uh, morning yoga videos every day. We're building on the Jared McCann yoga sequence. In order for it to make it more accessible, every other day I'm doing small instruction videos, as in short workshops. So yesterday we did the first part of the sequence, which was a pranayama exercise, and I chose the uh, pelvic floor isolations. That's where we're building on throughout the sequence. We want to stay engaged here. We want to have this um, pull up of the perineum for the men, or the cervix for the women. We call it the mula banda in uh, yoga. <laughs> So mula is the root and banda is the lock. And today we're adding on that throughout the sequence. You want to have that root engagement in order to help you have a safe practice. That way our lower back stays safe. That way we're building up uh, on a strong, deep core. The other um, important rule throughout the asana practice you want to keep your ribs closed now we don't focus on that during the pranayama exercises like the one we did yesterday but throughout the asana practice you want your ribs to be closed so that you have this clean line of energy this clean movement of the breath if you want to visualize it like that a clear intention in a straight line today we will look into downward facing dog pose and dolphin pose. These two poses are similar. Um, the only difference is that with dolphin pose, you're on your forearms. Let's get to it. <laughs> First thing I want to stress is the ribs closed. A simple exercise to find that is to lie on your back And then you bring your hands on your lower ribs. As you exhale, you'll notice that the ribcage closes. As you inhale, the ribcage widens. Now exhale and close the ribs. Inhale, keep the ribs closed as you inhale. Exhale, keep the ribs closed, maybe close a bit more. Inhale, stay with the ribs closed. This will be a bit challenging if you haven't been doing it, so stay with it. Exhale. Inhale, bring the breath from down low, the sacrum all the way up in that clear line while keeping the ribs closed. Three more times, exhale, and inhale, exhale, keep the ribs closed, feel that pull of the perineum up from the cervix, inhale, keep everything pulled up and keep the ribs closed. Okay, last one. Let's just do one more. Inhale, keep the ribs together. And exhale, relax. If you're not used to keeping the ribs together, it takes some time. So don't be hard on yourself and just Keep practicing and keep coming to it every day. Now the other cue that's very important, especially with downward facing dog, is the external rotation of the arms. So the arms, these are your arms, you can internally rotate them, externally rotate them, internally rotate them and externally rotate them. So when you internally rotate them, you bring the palms towards the torso and even back. And when you externally rotate them, you turn the palms forward and outwards. In downward facing dog, the cue that we usually use is turning the inner elbows, the eyes of the elbows, forward. 
So this is a big sternal rotation of the arms. This way you have a stronger arms, straight arms, you press down on your knuckles and you engage your chest and you're able to elevate your scapula. We'll talk about this elevation of the scapula right after this. So just have that in mind, this external rotation of the arms. When you're placing your palms down, use the whole of the palm and a cue that's useful is pressing the index knuckles down, the knuckles of the index fingers, the root knuckles of the index fingers onto the mat and then you externally rotate the arms. Turn the inner elbows forward. And the last thing is the elevated scapula. So, these wings, these bones here, they're your scapula. Scapulae, scapulae. So what happens with dog and also in dolphin is that you're elevating the scapula, pushing away. So shoulders come up close to the ears. Of course, you don't want the turtleneck, so you are not elevating the arms and bring the shoulder onto the ears, but you're pressing the arms up, elevating the scapula. So that's the last bit. Let's get to it. Downward facing dog. For downward facing dog, you start with the hands under the shoulders, the knees under the hips. Tuck the toes under. Now already have that external rotation of the arms. Press the knuckles down, the root knuckles down, especially the root knuckles of the index fingers. Keep externally rotating the arms. Tuck the toes under and exhale the hips up and back. Now this is a quite closed downward facing dog, but I like this. <laughs> I like this because it gives me more access to my hips. Um, some people cue downward facing dog from a plank. This is too wide for me, so when I come here, I also bring my feet in, just a hair, so that I have more um, access to my hips. Here, remember to pull the perineum up, the mula banda, and then close the ribs, closing the rib cage. Bring the chin in, and you should be able to look at your navel, your belly button. Okay, let's stay here for five. Press inner hands down, outer hands down, and press the knuckles of the hands onto the ground. Externally rotate the arms and elevate the scapula for four. Then find your feet. Press the outer feet down, especially if you're like me and you're collapsing in the arches. Outer feet down, inner feet down, and press centers of the heels onto the ground. Four, four. Then close the ribs, pull up the pelvic floor, bring the navel, the belly button in and towards the chest, chin in, relax the neck, but bring the chin in and gaze at the navel. Four, three. Pressing the hands down, the feet down, and find more access to your hips. Hips back and up. Tail, tailbone up onto the ceiling. Four, two. Focus and breathe. Four, one. Count down. Okay, modifications. If downward facing dog is too much for you, then that's normal. You take your time <laughs> and you get used to it. What helps find more access is closing the distance between hands and feet. So bringing the feet closer together and also widening the feet apart. The last thing that also gives you more access to your pelvis is bending the knees. So don't be afraid to bend the knees to find more access to the hips. Bring the hips back and up. And with time, you start straightening the heels, pressing the center of the heels into the ground. It's important to stay on all the knuckles, but, um, well, my teacher says that 
most of the weight should actually be on the feet. I have not experienced that yet, but maybe one day. So that's Downward Facing Dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana, which means Downward Facing Dog Pose. And then we'll look at Dolphin Pose, Ardha Pincha Mayurasana, which means Half Peacock's Feather Pose, or simply Half Forearm Stunt. It's just a down dog on forearms. So in order to get there, what we do is bring our forearms on the floor, we grab opposite biceps. So what we are going for is the elbows under the shoulders. Elbows are under the shoulders, and then we open up our arms, we press the forearms down, and then you press inner wrists down and outer elbows down. So the inner wrist and the outer elbow. This gives us more access to our chest. You will already feel it. So press the inner wrist down and the outer elbows down. That gives you access to your chest. For people who have um, stiff shoulders, you have the option of bringing the hands together. So that's a modification. Tap the toes under and then press inner wrists down and outer elbows down. All knuckles are still grounded. <laughs> Exhale, come back to your dolphin. Now here, don't forget what's happening with the core, the deep core. So pick up the pelvic floor, navel in and out, and close the ribs. Relax your head. And then again, you can bend the knees to have more access to the hips or straighten the legs and maybe walk the feet in. Four, five. Keep pressing inner wrists down, outer elbows down. And as you exhale, exhale hips back and up and curl the tailbone up. Four, four. Inhale to the upper back. Inhale to the shoulders. Inhale to the shoulder blades. Exhale, press away with the inner wrists, the outer elbows. Four, three. Pick up the bottom back ribs. Close the rib cage. Breathe gently, slowly, deeply while keeping the ribs close. Too. Four, two. And then stay with it. Press outer feet down, inner feet down, and lean center of the heels into the ground. Four, one. Carefully bring the knees down and sit back. So that was dolphin. <laughs> For me, dolphin is a really intense pose and it really wakes you up. <laughs> I hope that these cues were useful. They help me, they're by no means the golden rules. To find the rules that work for you, go with it for at least 40 days, <laughs> see what works for you, and then change it up and notice what another cue might do to your body. Thank you again for watching, and don't forget you can donate for the cause. Movember, Men's Health, it's about awareness of taboo issues that men don't talk about, prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and mental health issues. Every contribution counts, so thank you, thank you for every contribution, any amount.